Right, I'm loving it with music. Uh, All right, boys. Oh, yeah, you play Oh, we got sound. Muting Sean in. Later, Sean in. Unmuting microphones. Fash, stop talking about politically incorrect things. Well, Welcome, everybody. It doesn't cost much to build a wall, that's all. Well, I know, you know. Who should pay for it, though? Well, I think it should be in. <laughs> you wouldn't even care. Welcome, wouldn't everybody, care. to Lupac and Fash Blood Bowl Edition. Champions League Season 3 semi-final featuring a large stud with his Royal Eatman Orcs and Ringtail with his El Paravoz High Elf team. We're just doing some pre-match discussions. So first, Fashbinder, are you in game and on the team page? I am on the large stud team page. Let's let's look at the Orcs first then, shall we? Welcome over here. Yeah, thank you for all the hype in chat. Nice to see you here. We're just here to stream this game and then I am off and I believe Fash is going to bed. Yeah, probably. So we were just saying Orcs are one of the really, really good value for money. You can start with your four Blitzers, four Black Orcs, uh, three Linemen and three Rerolls for 1000 TV. And they just get better from there, don't they? Yeah, if you can avoid the Claw Pom. Uh... Not really too scared of much. You'll often have money in the bank floating around to, uh, you know, induce wizards on every you know second or third game as you're playing your qualifying matches. Uh, unlikely to have you know radical implosions on the team, but if you do, you know, not too hard to get the no. people who replace as they're cheap overall in the grand scheme of things compared to like a Brett Blitzer or something. The only downside to orcs, in my opinion, is black orcs are pretty annoying to skill up. But even yeah. then, you know, if you're if you're absolutely dominating a match and you've got say four turns, a black hawk handoff isn't unreasonable. Yeah, I get you wouldn't want to. No, but I think I think say you know say you're one nil up, you've turned your opponent over pretty much. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. You've got, yeah, you've got a hand up. I'm not. I'm, yeah, yeah, no, I'm sure. never talking. I'm <laughs> never talking clutch situation. Suddenly, Thud has two black hawks that are very close to level. One with a single cas, one with a single SVP. Yeah, if he makes it through, he'd, this lo he'd love to get them going to the final, wouldn't he? Yeah. 
But yeah, it's a pretty it's a pretty solid orc team. The Black Orc's not that impressive uh, for the number of games. Although actually, he qualified. So how many has he played in the playoff? This is his third playoff game. So he qualified with only 32 matches. Interesting not to if you're if you're top orc, it's interesting not to push on there and try and level up. Depends how close it was. I mean, when you're playing, you know, towards the end of a season, every game you play is a risk of your team imploding. Well, yeah, but you've got to take that risk. Well, different people have different goals. Some some people do just want to qualify, and others looking to qualify with a team that's capable of winning. Like, two different sort of criteria. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Thud says he qualified with only eight hours left, and that was another orc contesting him. So didn't Okay, so it was, yeah, it was qualifying was the key. Yeah. Look, three Blodge, three Mighty Blow, and the Tackle Pom. Sure hands with Tackle, so if uh, Ringtail does go to base the ball, the ball carrier blitz to clear himself mightn't be bad. And single dirty player, so if he's got 440 in inducements, he said. 400 uh, exactly, it looks like. 400. So, wizard, bribe. Double bribe, maybe. Double How bribe, How deep yeah. was Ringtail's bench? Uh, one man. Hmm. No, two men. He's got, no, he's got a 13-man squad, but he has got an armor seven guy, and there's a agi-busted lineman, and he's just he's just keeping those guys around to make up the numbers, you know, just for some fodder. Yeah. Well, you know, you can't really afford to fire him, and, and there's the, once the finals have happened, or once no, it's no, started. No, you, you're, just, you're just seeing it through. Yeah. Um, so he's got he's got a decent-looking team. Orc no, there's, like, there's not really... The there's not really a lot of point getting an extra sub. I think the argument for the cheaper bribe, and that would be a 50k lineman, or 40k uh, goblin. Not that you'd really want to field a goblin against a mighty blow tackle team. No, no. I mean, orc linemen are so good. They're my favourite. Mm. I've always said this. They're my favourite linemen in the game, Fash. Yep. Strength free, armor 9, agi free, 50k. Thank you very much. Hard to beat. And when people say, oh, you know, throw a zombie or throw a roger at, at, you know, X to tie it up, you're like, well, you can, but they're AV8, and they're not that resilient. Yeah, yeah, eventually, the eventually they at AV9, get banged, but they're cheap. AV9, you're a little more content in throwing them at it. The difference is, you get a free 50-50 to get your zombies back if they're cast. The orc True. lineman never gets the apo, does he? Never. But then again, only last drive of the game could get the apo. Love the three blodge blitzers. I suppose the stand firm one in particular could be a real annoyance for the high elves, couldn't he? If only he had tackle as well. Only two tacklers for the orc team. I think, I, I mean, the star of the team is King Vale Oscar II. Hands down. He is, he is the absolute superstar. He's the only one with stat ups on the team. He's the pommer. He's also a, one of the tacklers. His he would wake or break this game, won't he, Fash? Um, yeah. Well, look, the uh, Ringtail does have two four strength catches, and so the single assist with the, his tackle pom on a on one of the four strength catches, one of whom is Agi Five. Uh, yeah, huge two hundred and or two hundred k or more value uh, in a removal. So yeah, two, 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 yeah. And it's so a, he's, he's a two hundred and twenty k player himself. True. So I mean, the or the orc team. Three three blodge is nice, but pretty unremarkable beyond that one blitzer. Built correctly, I would say. I like the cool. uh I like the build. Should we take a look at the high elves? El Paravoz. A lot of people's favourite to go all the way now with the out of the remaining four. Absolutely. I'd have to favour Ringtail as well. Uh, I was great impressed team, in this game scenario. Absolutely. Doesn't love take to see him get some risk. critical level ups here. Yeah, I remember you mentioning last game that it was someone that was really close that was otherwise really good. Yeah, you've got you got a few people. It, Two guys, three thrower. SVP. He had his uh, blodge thrower, or the non shore hand thrower, died last game, and he has repurchased at zero in the bank. Fair enough. What does that cost? Ninety k. I mean, it, he would have got a babe with that money. He's got a thirteen man bench anyway. He's got a lot of blodge and rodge. What's the thrower really doing that isn't alignment? I guess it's just a second passing option. One at the back hands off to the other thrower. But at this, at this, yeah, hand. but at this TV, right? 
why would you not buy a thrower over a lineman? What do you do with the leftover 20k? What does that 20k give your opponent? Save it for the you final. Know, you might... You yeah, but, confident. yeah, but what, what winning does he get in at 2170? He needs to roll a True. 5 to even make it relevant because of spiraling expenses. So you might as well just chip in the extra 2 NEK for the two situational skills because there is no downside. Fair enough. I, you know, I, I don't mind... If he gets a pass on MVP too, something, something like that, wouldn't, wouldn't be bad nor outrageous. Uh, we are at the start of the match time. I'll quickly have a gander at the. We'll see if it's okay, up. Okay, let us know. If they are going. I mean, I don't think I don't think he's looking to replace either of these linemen now. Because, you know, the AG3 lineman just stands where he is and takes his beat, and he's there for fodder, isn't he? Yep. And, and the, AB, middle, so, the, AB, the, AB, the AB7 with dodge, I actually reckon, is probably better than the non. Especially when you think that if he meets Woohoo Boy in the final, there's only one tackler on his team. True. Uh, large thud says they're going into the game now. Presumably a minute or two for inducements. Okay. So, uh, definitely Ringtail uh, is your pick then. Ringtail favoured, I would say. I think we're both picking the same. Hard to uh, say no to. You, it's a you great picked team. the winner correctly yesterday, but it was it was touch and go, wasn't it? Yeah, it really was. Really, <laughs> oh I, man. <laughs> but I don't, I don't, I don't think this is a done deal pre-match. I'm well, no game of Blood Bowl is a done deal pre-match, but I don't actually think Ringtail is heavily favoured because if if the superstar blitzer for the Orcs goes to town. Anything can happen. I'll tell you what, to prove there's no bias commentary, I'm going to uh, put my bash points on Large Thud, who informs us we have a wizard, two bribes, and two babes. And so I think uh, Large Thud will go for his, you know, naturally the orc bash strategy is picking up a Kaz, being up men, being able to two-man mark every elf, and with a, with a wizard for a turnover and a double bribe to foul out the 13-man high elf. Bit of a bit of a hassle to get through, but you've got a dirty player, and I guess with two bribes and, and two babes, you're going to be up men's, if anyone's up men's, barring Radical Kazdai. And I think he could win through the traditional Orc Bash game. Yeah, oh, that, that's his game plan here. It's, it's one of the oldest matchups in Blood Bowl, Bash vs Agility. Yep. With that in mind, I'm going to start the recording and do the intro and we shall begin. So welcome everybody. Live. Welcome everybody. It is Season 3 Champions League Official Playoff Semi-Final. Featuring Ringtail on the High Elves versus a Large Shud on the Orcs. Joining me in always is the irrepressible Fashbinder. Oh, big up your man. And uh, do the hokey pokey as you turn around. That's what it's all about. The hokey pokey or the okey pokey, depending on your regional preference. Right, game's live. Uh, looks like Large Thud is defending. High Elves on offense first, uh, presumably. Presumably he might have kicked to him. Yeah, I imagine that both both players would prefer to defend first in this matchup. Yeah, it puts the pressure on. Well, look. Orcs, remember, orcs remember we discussed to go, yesterday. Orcs to go for the two-one grind, um, and high elves obviously would prefer to try and turn over the orcs while they've got all of their players. Yeah, well, this morning for me, yesterday for you, we did talk about the advantage of receiving first, in that the your offense is the one way your rerolls really matter, and you absolutely have to use them. And unless you're making really safe plays first, and you're not pressured. You're gonna have to reroll to keep the ball safe, and it's. I think that's more important to get out of the way in the first half, so that yeah, definitely. You defense can save your rerolls for the second half. So I do think it's advantageous to receive first in the overtime format, regardless of your race. But it does it mean that there's eight turns of grinding for large stud. Yeah, two of block. course, and, he, and he's, he's got the potential to take a lot of damage in that time, but. There's, like, there's only one real danger player, and he can only make one blitz per turn. Yeah, absolutely. Interesting to see the troll in play for uh, the orcs, a rookie troll. I mean, a lot of a lot of orcs at this level don't play a troll. That's true. I think it was a medical against the Muldripster and Bleeding Hippie match. He wanted the extra strength for those two bash teams, and he bought it 
in his first match. Yeah, or Thor's first yeah, match. Yeah, nice, nice strength five, five piece. He's fairly resilient with the regeneration as well, and he's decent value for money for a big guy. It's like he's yeah. trying to pick off. I like, I like this call. Go for the guy who you're most likely to knock down. He'll have to get very lucky to do a, do some damage to the armor nine, even with mighty blow. However, you're not, you don't have a chance of the damage if you don't knock him down. So he gives himself a 75% knockdown rate rather than a 55 on somebody else. Yeah, and look, large studs, black orc front line with the, what do you call this defense? I call it the boob defense, but I assume that's not what most people call it. I like uh, I, I, I call it a four. I just call it a four-four defense. Fair enough. Though, if um, if my opponent has like fast hitters, I tend to put where the where the killer blitzer is and the blood sure hands guard. I tend to tuck them in and keep the heavies on the outside. So I set it up slightly differently depending on how scary my opponent is. Fair enough. Uh, yeah, so the, the advantage of that defense is that even with the four strength blitz, it has to be an assist that comes around. And this assist is likely to be pommed, and then if it's not on removal, it's likely to be felled. Uh, Ringtail realizing that, tagging the dirty player. Which means that instead the blitz can come on the guardman. The only guardman on the elf team as well. Yeah, absolutely. That said, with the strength four, it's not such a big deal. The ball carrier is, uh... Is strength three for the orcs. I'm assuming it's the Shorehands Blodge guy. Yeah, safe to say so. That, that said, he could carry on the strength four, just but he knew he wants to be doing damage with him. But you know, with no strip ball, there's no, there's nothing forcing him to use the Shorehands guy. And against these agi five elves, the strength four might be a good option for the ball carry. It's just a shame he's so valuable. I think if you get rid of the the two four strength men make the four strength then relevant. If he carries on a four strength man, the other four strength man, you know, bangs him. Whereas he carry only four strength man, uh, with only three strength opponents, it's a lot harder to get a two die, uh, even harder to get a one die, well as hard, not as hard, but hard to get a one die still. But I would carry on the four strength if my opponent had no four strength. Yeah, yeah, I suppose this, uh, there's the agi four strength four guy who can, who can make the blocks. So his own, oh no, he has got a second guard, so the other, the Blodgestep Blitz has got guard as well. His skills were hidden for some reason. He has got two. Also cheeky vanity pass on the thrower. So MVP away from a level. Stand from a great pick against, uh, well, any team really. But allows for these sideline plays, no risk of a serve. And stops uh, agility teams from running down the sideline. Wow! Going for the armor seven here. Three dice in AV7. First of the game. Yeah, three dice in AV7. Unsurprising. And so those block dice wouldn't have actually got down the guard guy. So, made the right call. Wants to protect this guy. Gets rewarded with a Kaz. Gotta be happy. One Finn from one. A great target. Yeah, just carrying on where he left off with Bleeding Hippie. Oh, well, the difference is Hippie wasn't uh, AV7 felt like he was. Yeah, I bet he did. So one man in favor of the orcs. High elves have the ball though and they have to they have to kill a bit of time here and they have to think about a wizard. Yeah, if the numbers deficit gets too small, they might even think about the earlier score, uh, just to not be down so many of them. But you still really want to score on turn eight. In well, a position like, you know, where large, you large studs game plan is exactly that: force him to score. The, the problem is, is yeah, you know, what do the high elves do to kill time? Sure, they could just play keep away until they're ready to make their advance. But this this blitz is just going to be smacking them every turn, and against AV8 with tackle as well, he's going to get a really he's going to get a decent removal rate, isn't he? I guess rather than the staggered screen that we've seen from Ringtail in every match, I think maybe the solid line might be better. So if Large Thug wants to come in to get a 2 die block, he's going to have to commit men. Yeah. Guardman taking down the lineman. 
I think we're going to see a strength for Mighty Blow Blitz around the outside. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That will leave him quite exposed. Nice box cars on the armor there on the dirty player, but nothing more than a stun. He will shake it off. Well, look, with the stun, you can be a little, more, a little bit more risky with someone. Like, if you were thinking about blitzing the Mighty Blow Pommer, for whatever reason, seems a bit risky. But if you were, you'd be less concerned with the dirty uh, player. You'd have, you'd, have to stick, you'd have to stick the non-bludge catcher up there for the assist, wouldn't you? And then he's going to get three diced and have a bad day afterwards. Yeah, and listening to the damage against Hawks just seems so poor. I mean, you still should, because it's, it isn't too hard, as we just saw on the armor roll, to uh, <laughs> beat 10. It isn't, it isn't impossible. One of the downsides of Ringtail's team, like, and it's, it's kind of a good problem to have sometimes, but you've got, you know, almost everybody is skilled up, bar a few rookies. So there's always going to be something good for Large Thud to target. Going right around the outside. He actually could have come in the inside there, I think, Fash, and then fallen back. And he would have had enough movement to not need GFIs to get to safety. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, he would have been slightly better off, I think. I think you're right. And I think it would have saved the two bus on a push. Uh, but added now, the two bus without. Now damage. he has to protect this catcher, doesn't he? But what does he protect it with? His other catcher? I suppose he could use the lineman. He could put the lineman one square up and right. No, he could still nip in straight. Mm. He really doesn't want this guy blocked, we know that much. It is movement 7 from the uh, number 6 blitzer, the tackle homer from Large Thud. Uh, so it will be in range. Well, actually, the stunned, the stunned dirty player might be in the way. The stun dirty player actually makes it a GFI randomly. Well, I think the number one black hawk would come across a play guard, get a two to clear if he really wanted to go for that blitz. Two oh, okay, yeah. And then you're powering, uh, looking to power the lodger. I'll tell you what, it is turn two, and it does seem like Ringtail's pretty keen on stalling. Hey, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, we've, yeah. Seen, we've seen his game plan. He's not. He's doing, He's in no rush to get into the old calf. He's just trying to minimize the damage he takes in the meantime. Wouldn't hate some Manson, really. Like the guard Black Orcs. Yeah, it's forcing to roll some dice. Yeah, exactly. Even though they're not you're portable, not, even though they're all bludge men. You're not too worried about the return hits. I all think the strength four. It's one of the only tacklers on the team as well, which is quite relevant against these blitzers. Three tacklers on the high elf team, two on the orcs. Four rerolls as well. He could actually greed this. I wouldn't. I. I don't think it would disgust me to see a greed here. He does. He gets it. Are you disgusted? No, not at all. He had four rerolls. Oh. There you go. That's this is this is this is the downfall, and it's a, an Apo fail, double MNG. So the strength four will not final. Two turns, two. Oh, cards. Simeon wins the game from this point. Well, two blitzes really. He hasn't made a single other block, has he? Aside from blitz from the tackle pommel. Hasn't need to pile on. Hasn't need to pile on at all. No. Uh, natural arm break at a nine. Two. Natural Kaz at a 10. Didn't even need his skills. Didn't get a Kaz on the Mighty Blow side. Seven. Got a power though, so he's got to be pleased. But it wasn't a Kaz. He's two from three. Well, the, I, like I said, this is the guy that's going to decide the game. King Veal Oscar is going to town today, isn't he? Oh, he's on fire. And, Absolutely. And Ringtail, fire. Ringtail has got to be wincing now, hasn't he? Absolutely. He's got to be feeling that. Yeah, I like this from Ringtail. It'll be well. Let's move our entire team away from that guy. And again, you know, he sped up his turn speed here. Which... You no, know, I'm not, you know, I'm not saying... I'm not saying he's tilting, but... 
a anybody can get a bit frustrated when you see that two blitzes, two cas. Even you know, even though it's a mighty blow guy, it's not that probable. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, they were both AV7 targets. Yeah. Yeah, the first lineman was AV7 as well. But the, the Apo being out now Most could done. really damage his chances moving forward if he does make it through this game. And if he, if he sidelines here, Thud might just... You know, he's got a tackler in range. He's got some support. He might just wizard. He's going to hand off, I believe, to the edgy five. If he has the option to blitz, I'm pretty sure he'd wizard. What does he do? Go for the double sideline cage? The orc dodging would be a 30%, 6 plus. I mean, he's got, he's got himself into a situation where... Hang on, what? <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. Whoa, what? Did, did he forget something, Fash? Nah, he's got men. He can fix that. Yeah, but he's got to make these. He's got to. He's got to make these dodges. True, and it will only be a one-man screen, and there will be a tackle blitz on offer. Yeah. You don't yeah. even need the tackler. You just wizard and clear the screener. Yeah. Okay, this is a bit safer. But again, I I never like making the dodges an absolute necessity if that makes sense yep because he could he could have kept the ball back almost out of orc range done the dodges first but then i suppose if he loses the ball downfield it's 10 times worse for him should he turn over so maybe his play was safer actually well the safe place to us i think yeah i don't know maybe uh yeah look something else Only... versus either the and if the dodge fails, he's done either way. Oh man, that's a killer. Like, the only good thing is his tackle isn't that important should he get to the final against Wahoo Boy, because he's not, he's not full of dodge and blodge. But at the same time, Wahoo Boy's team is so cheap. You get to the point where if you're up 300 TV, you're going to give them a wizard, babes, whatever anyway, right? At that point, you don't mind being up even more because the wizard is the key point and usually the bribe if they've got dirty players, etc. Um, he re-rolls that. He had four yeah, re-rolls though enough. because of leader. I don't I don't mind that. To have more than one man protecting the ball, absolutely. Just to stop yeah. that, the bolt into the blitz for a push. Or also, two men, two men down, you, might, you could re-roll it just to avoid the armor roll. I don't mind that. It sounds like Fash is using Discord on his phone. What microphone do you use, Fash? Uh, the Yeti. Yeti Snowball. Oh, man. It's time for an upgrade of all your streamer cash. It's, it's not that much streamer cash, to be honest. Get yourself you, a Rode Are you not a fan? Me. I think it's more the latency. Every now and then you sound a bit robotic. And I don't think it's microphone related. I think it's an Australian talking to a Brit at 300 milliseconds of delay. Or of, of latency. Who knows? But it'll be something to that effect. Probably something we could look at in, in future, maybe. If there is a more reliable... Uh, voice service than Discord. So look, in a great spot, no wizard. Uh, I was thinking, you know... It'd be super rowdy, but you could uh, surf the four strength catcher with the with a greed wizard somewhere. So it might have blown one catcher, a surf on the other, kind of tempting. That would certainly force the score. If you've got both of the catcher threats, then either surfed or on the ground, uh, the orcs can then screen out the last remaining catcher. It is movement nine, but it's not agility five. Uh, something's broken with uh, your mic. I cannot hear you. Repack? Sorry, it muted there. My bad. Ah, uh, classic. Okay. 
I clicked the button on the side of my headphones, my mistake. Uh, yeah, so I think you can't wizard in that spot unless it's winning you the game. Because say the wizard does no damage, but he gets the surf, the surf does no damage. Yeah, he forces Ringtail to score. Ringtail's got two subs. He's still fielding 11 on defense and your wizard's gone. Um, I think unless it's unless it's going to clutch him the game. Yeah, I think so too. I don't, I don't want to see. Him, I don't want to see him hold on to it too much, like we saw yesterday, where it just never actually became a factor. I mean, it might have forced the one turn, but I, I honestly think Holber would have one turned regardless, because that's just his style. Yeah, well, look, he, he he technically did play around the wizard, even though it cost him the game. Uh, also, you might find in Fash's stream, you'll be hearing me on my headset microphone. On my stream, you'll be hearing me on my broadcast microphone. So that's probably quite a difference. Have you been telling people there? about my secret orbital missile platform? I don't. I can't hmm. confirm nor deny. You know, there will be better quality marks than an $80 uh, Yeti, but for $80, it's good value for money in that it does its job. So tell you what, are we going to see a, uh, a handoff to this catcher into a Geopider touchdown? Or are we going to see an extra turn of stall? Well, how does he protect round the back? Exactly. There's nowhere he can stall. If he's if he's not scoring, nah, he has he's really score. making it safe, yeah. So the, the two cars on those two blitzes. Enough pressure. Yeah, well, he sort of. I think he sort of knee jerk reaction and went up the sideline. But if he stays around his midfield, he knows he's getting one more blitz next turn. Then he's getting another blitz on the turn that he sidelines. Fair enough. Seems enough yeah. Ringtail goes 1 0 up, but unable to execute his game plan. And I think that puts him firmly on the back foot for a 2-1 grind now. He he will have to turn over the Orcs in one of these drives. Absolutely, with only a single reroll from Large Stud, had four water to begin with. Uh, not not struggling for rerolls. We'll be able to make the progression over the course of five turns. Um, He's also going to be opening with three Mighty Blow LOS blitzes. Uh, and presumably and a foul. The Mighty Blow piling on blitz. So it'll be a matter of doing that as well as the foul and keeping the ball safe. Ringtail fielding his full team on the field. No bench from here. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Does that microphone sound better? Yeah, Test definitely it. does. Yeah, this is my broadcast microphone then. Much better. You sound like okay, a person we'll, as opposed to <laughs> as opposed we will to use, person. We'll use that and I'll put the other one away. I have to listen to you from my other in-ear. I'll have to get my in-ear uh, earphone. Oh man, it's like a different person. <laughs> uh, what time is it for you? Uh, right now it is three minutes to one o'clock. Uh, PM? Uh, yeah, in the afternoon. All right, I can hear myself on the speakers. You ready? Hey, Karen, do the Karen stream. How did we do? She's not here. She's All at right. work. If I yelled louder, she might have heard me. It's pretty excited for that, to be honest. I'm moving my microphone away from the speakers, so I can't hear the feedback. Fair enough, the three... Uh, three yeah, I, oh yeah, I need to turn from... you up because I've changed it now. Hang on one sec. Right, talk fash. Talk and fash. Uh, Ringtail with the 3-3-2 three, three, defense. It means that Large Thug can blitz anyone he wants. The real advantage of the rule of five setup is that it's harder to blitz C-man at the back. 
but by having these extra men down the sides, uh, you're exposing everyone but three. So it's more of a rule of three setup. And that large player can take a stab at whoever he wants, and losing a leader thrower in the first half would be terrifying. Yeah, he would seem like a prime target, but that will put his uh, his tackle palmer right downfield. And and I think at this point, Ringtail would happily foul it as well. High kick caught. Ball will be nice and safe. Uh, screened out by the guard blitzes. Presumably the LOS boxer made the tackle palmer blitzes the kick man. Dirty player then fouls him. I think uh, at a 10 second glance that will be Large Blood's turn. Yeah, I mean he's just going to see. I don't. He's not utilizing all his mighty blow on the LOS here. I'm not sure about that. Never mind. We forgot. It's Large Thud. He doesn't need to. Oh man, that was a uh, eight. So it wouldn't have been a Kaz either way. Look at that. Bam. That one would have been a KO, though. Yeah, look, you're definitely right. Blow, he would have gone two men ahead there. I want the rationales. I guess he maybe wants to guard around the ball carrier in an eye cage or something to that effect. Yeah, but you got or Black Hawks for that. Yeah, yeah, it's a good point. I mean, in my mind, you take the three mighty blows on the line, making sure the troll is a three dice, and you blitz with the other one. You, if you've got four mighty blow on your team... On your receiving drive, you, you have to use them. Especially against fellows with that blodge. I'm with you there. Piles on. Because he, know, he knows that Ringtail has no bench now, so he's got to be very reluctant in fouling. Gets another removal. So two removals, turn one is a cracking start for Thud. Wizard in hand. He's firmly in control of this game now. And most importantly, if he scores on turn 8, there'll only be one shot that KO's waking up. And so these KO's, you know, potentially out for the next drive too. Which is presumably the final drive. There's still one more hit to come from the troll. Nice three dice. Carefully make sure that he's fully out of range with his thrower, which means he doesn't need to cage round it. The ball man could be based, though, if the catcher, if the move nine catcher is feeling rowdy. Yeah, especially okay. with the uh, especially with the tackle Palmer well out of position. I think Thud is setting up for a nice plus three foul on the other thrower though, the non stunned one. Which Definitely. is good. Did we say he's got two bribes? Two bribes. Wow, yeah. He can foul anything every turn now, can't he? He should be, absolutely. And so I guess uh, Ringtail did put a little bit of focus on tying up the uh, Dirty Player lineman, either through blocking it or tagging it. And we haven't seen a foul until now. Well, he didn't. There was no fouling because he removed a guy with every hit. There was no one left to foul. That's true. He but I mean, the the on turn three, down, when he did But it was yeah. the Dirty Player that did it. So, uh, last time you mentioned you were thinking about you would risk the foul on the Pommer, on the Tackle Pommer. And you're right, it is a tackle. It is the one tackle, isn't it? Second yeah, tackle, two I tackle, mean, the other's the ball what do you What do you do it with now, though? A thrower? thrower? It would be a dodge and a GFI. Or you could do no risk, no dodges with the dodge wrestle, but dodge wrestle is much more useful, isn't it? I think I'd foul it, and I think I'd, you know, turn five. I think I'd commit a reroll to fouling him as well. You're gonna, you're not gonna get many shots on him like this. And if if yeah. you don't, he's just gonna tear your team apart for the rest of the game. That is true. 
Similarly though, uh, Large Slab has the Apo, and so if it is a badly hurt, it's getting apo Yeah, but it could be an MNG into MNG. Same as before. True. Could be a send off for yeah. the for the for the stun, and then you're just done. Well, it, it, it well, you're could. More Ringtail's already on the back foot, so. So you think that this is a point in time where he's just so far behind that he needs to make a risk. Well, he's looking to stay in it. A, a four a four turn then an eight turn grind from the orcs with this guy with a wizard in hand. He doesn't actually have the specific tools to get into the cage. He's got some nice actually five for the four pluses in. But there's going to be presumably guard on each corner preventing the two die. Unless he uses his strength four. It's either that or he has to try and split the orc team now. Yeah, well down... Down two, arguably three with the stun. Maybe looking to get away from the from the Pommer. And as we saw in the first half, just rotating to the other side of the field once he had uh, committed to one side. The problem is now if he fouls, he's splitting his team and just leaving the middle completely open. So I think he was looking at where his where his dodge was used there. I thought he might go a bit more aggressive dodging there. Yeah. I wouldn't have minded him cutting the corner. One of one in thirty six, maybe thinking about double GFIs to base the ball. Looks like we've got a bit of a Tyrion Lannister situation. Yeah, he seems to be trying to deny the cage. But that's just never gonna happen. No, strength four man gets blocked back and he can cage up without any GFIs. I'm actually a little, as, as large thud, a little more scared of AG5 Wrestle Tackle, as Wrestle Tackle on a 1D isn't bad on the ball carrier. And a rowdy dodge into that 1D. No, but it won't be a 1D if he cages correctly. True. But with basing double, on the guard, double, double guard you could maybe tie up the guard. One. Make it a two dice. But I think that's a if the other AG5 had it. guard as well, then I'd be worried. So full time used to ringtail here. Fair enough, a sacrifice to the Pommer, forcing the blitz, and then some basing elsewhere. But it, well, well, sorry, you're right. Well, it is, it is, it is a Tyrion, in that it is a half man's. I think if you're going to be basing, I don't. People, I don't think he. I think Thud has the discipline to not use his Pommer here. Yep. I think it's more important to clear. I mean, he can still get a regular hit on an, an armor seven catcher with double stat ups. That's still pretty good. The most important thing here is getting the cage secure with double guard corners and then focusing on it. He's actually, he is quite on the clock because of that really deep kick. I mean, there was argument for the short kick to put the ball out of range of the short hands man, but with the deep kick, it puts the Orcs under pressure to move forward, which I like. Yeah, essentially an extra turn of boom for the ball carrier. And unless you can test the ball sort of in his half, so the cage starts in his half rather than your half. He's actually going to go for the mighty blow hit on it, which I love, because that actually puts the guard in the exact... No, what? Oh. I would have mighty blow hit that guy kind of irrelevant now but yeah I think so if you're not blitzing with tackle and you've got the option of not mighty blow versus mighty blow I would go for the mighty blow for sure so he needs to make sure his guard run opposite corners here doesn't he uh, so I think he should have I don't well, know, the extra black off filling the other it. Side. Yeah. yeah, he's got he's got some off filling it anyway. Quick maths fash. Two die uphill with wrestle tackle. What's his chance of getting the ball? Oh man. Uh, three and six. That Over two dice, be... opponent's choice. Twenty five percent. Exactly what I was gonna say. You, you just got me there. I totally knew it. I didn't know. I was going to say I'm 
See a large stud showing good discipline there, putting ball safety before hitting with the killer. And he knows that now the thrower is tied up, so that thrower will have to dodge away, and his movement seven killer will come into play next turn. Safe place first, that's what we like to see. Are you gonna he's also foul safe, the from the count he's safe from the counter, mighty blow. Oh boy. Unassisted foul. Don't mind it with two bribes. Seems fair enough. And with the extra man uh, creating the line on the left hand side, it makes the easier dodge in through the double guard and going in through the double guard. Oh, baby. Try and put some pressure on the ball here, maybe force a dodge or a counter play. Yes, yeah, fair enough. If he can get the blodge stepping blitzer in there now, that would be pretty nice because although they can clear it, he'll have to fill all the squares that he wants to sidestep into, which will mean consuming men who aren't defending the ball. And if he can halt the orc advance. He might be able to just stop the stop the score in three. Yeah, that's true. The sidestepper would be a bit of a pain uh, to get the sidestepper and then the four strength. You know, it'd be three on the black and uh, three around the back, and then the, the blitz on the sidestepper to push out the four strength. That's and any time he's using resources for that, those resources are not going forward with them. Yeah, absolutely. Troll could go stupid as well, which would render him pretty useless for the rest of the drive. Uh, three turns, three rerolls. This definitely gets rerolled. Double ones. Ouch. Never Early a good time for double possible. ones, but he, you know he didn't get that pressure, and he's got well. a lot of guys in base contact now. Obviously, whatever dodge he tried next was failing. True. There was only one safe play in the edgy five. Yeah, catcher. Like one additional person. Don't know where it was going to go. Maybe the thrower. So we're going to we're going to see a go. mighty blow blitz, I think here. Why would you not hit that with mighty blow? I guess the rationale is he wants his blitzes to give up with his blitzes, so if someone's going to fall back, have it be the black orc, maybe? Yeah, the, yeah, the forward Wouldn't it just cage. be the opposite, though? Wouldn't you rather the blitzes be the ones that can catch up, post doing something useful, and dodge out post something useful? Yeah, the, bl the, the black, black orcs, orcs need to open. move every turn to stay relevant. Yeah. I think you're right. I, I would have would have loved the blitzer to make a block there. It, it's, it's twofold, isn't it? You're mighty playing one of the best players on their team, who happens to be armor 7, and you've still got the movement to keep up with the ball. Because look at look at the available players, right? And look at the position of the high elves. You can't go that far this turn anyway, so the Black Hawk could have kept up. Yeah, it'd be a different story if you had to commit, you know, five men to make that block. But because he already had the assists, I think the blitz was fine. I guess being really dil diligent in playing around the AG5 wrestle. power on the edgy three lineman or double push power rather happening before the blocks of block there i think with the killer as well now he could just keep him downfield as a scoring threat knowing that it's going to be a massive investment like if the elves try and blitz him it will take them three players because their strength falls out of position and if they're putting three players to knock him down they're not stopping the advance so he's actually in a great spot now, isn't he, from, from where he was. Absolutely. He can even get two people to dodge, or even just force the assist to get the 2D and it's still tie up three people.
Possible dodge in here, though, on the side corner. It would be a 5 plus for the Agi 5. No guard on the left hand side. Could dodge the lineman to cancel both Black Orcs. Put someone on top to cancel the lineman. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 plus. 55% in with a reroll for two dice on the ball. And if he gets the ball loose and then applies some pressure, the Orcs are almost certainly not scoring. Yeah, definitely. And you wouldn't want to see an offensive wizard, although if scoring this drive is almost like using the wizard to turn him over if you had to use the wizard to score. Whoa, that's a huge hit from the catcher. Powers the blodger and Kazes him. Now, instant apo there from uh, Large Thud. Badly hurt, so he can guarantee the success. Did he need that guy that much, though? Well, he's no four strength tackle pom. And if this guy dies on this block, oh boy. Yeah. I mean, you know, the High Elves still do have some mighty blow players. I think the game accidentally gave Ringtail Thud's injury dice there. Oh, now look at you. Well, no, I, don't think, I don't think either coach has made the... That must have been what a big one, because there was no mighty blow on that hit. A 10-10. Quad fives were rolled. I mean, if it was a bash matchup, sure, instant apo. But, I, you know, the guard isn't that relevant in this match, is it? Especially when you've got an abundance of it. Another pal. Gonna take down this guy. Imagine, yeah, like you said, imagine that guy died on the next block, Fash. You'd be terrified. And that would that would really put you behind for the, the finals match against uh, Wibu. If, if you did win from there. i tell you what, this is a couple uh, of successful wizard... dodges from the thrower here and the strength four. And I think it's going to be hard for Thud to run this one in. Yeah, he's really dawdled the last two turns. I mean, a little bit of pressure, but I think he could have made better ground and still had it safe. Would you use the wizard to score this drive? Only if it's giving me a 2 plus to score. Yeah. I think so too. Because you're still probably favoured in overtime. But then again, only if you receive. Because this is this is a high elf wow. team that is scoring if they want to score. If they yeah. have the ball and they decide they want to score, they're probably going to score. And that's something I've always said about high TV high elves. They're one of the best at actually scoring a touchdown. Yeah, that's true. There's plenty of one-turn options. I think there's two movement line catches. Yeah, two movement line catches. So, uh, two men that have to be removed before turn 16 for Large Thud to look to neither one turn, you know, more realistic, right? But you're quite right, with the Dawdling and the Blackhawks being used to Blitz rather than the Blitzers, and the Blackhawks not making ground down the field, still in his own half after three turns. Might stop. Yeah, he, you know, he had to be aware of the clock, and that, that's where the kicker and the deep kick really came in to its own, didn't it? I, I think he could have made more ground. I don't think there was enough pressure that really rationalised that. I would just, I would just would have preferred the, the move blitzes. seven downfield as, as the threat. Yeah, is Ringtail just, just thinking here about his final positioning? Because he's running out of time on my be. screen. Five seconds. Or he's disconnected. He's timed out on mine. I'm going to reconnect to the game just to no. see. I'll wait patiently. I think... Come yeah. back to a minute. We're back. Oh, yeah, he obviously disconnected. Did he, do you reckon he did a print screen? No. I reckon it might have been the uh, the Russian sacking him. Russian Tinternet. Fair enough, I attempted a 2 plus 2 plus through tackle zones. That could have been a not through tackle zones dodge. 
use the dodge reroll on the first one and roll the one on the second one. He didn't have dodge on that guy. Didn't have dodge. Fair enough. So it must have been that a good team reroll. Armor, armor, se armor seven, Apo gone. No hanging around from Thud here, though. Looking to break down the right. Or is he just going for damage? Nah, he'd have to be breaking down the right. If he's not in a scoring position with that ball carrier at the end of this turn. Oh boy. But it's going to be... Probably a GFI. Yeah, it's four, G four GFIs around this way. And look where the uh, look where the AG5 catcher happens to be standing. You know yeah, these really GFIs. These GFIs, Fash. You don't want to be failing these. He made the correct decision, not piling on there, keeping his his guy relevant. One hundred percent. But he he has to potato with his ball carrier, right? Yep. Which means he also has to potato with the other blitzer to cover, but no one else can reach. I guess maybe a guard eye cage. So just the man in the center with two guard on either side. And then you'd have to. No, because the, the ball carrier has to be one square forward from where this guy is. So this guy has to do the GFI first to, to be relevant. And there oh, goes boy. the first GFI. He double ones this, he could be in some trouble. He's in some trouble. Wow. Yep, yeah, shouldn't be doing GFIs. That was, that was just a bit poor. Just really dawdled for the last So where three is strength four? There's a guard blodger who could get in. There's a tackle mighty blow who could do some work here. Oh man. If Ringtail can pull off some elf BS here, he's got a reroll to use. It's going to be 1 0 at half time, which means it's now looking like an overtime grind. Oh, uh, are you able to plug in your headphones? Why is that? Am I feeding back? Yeah. Are we got a little earpiece thing. Yeah, look, a couple of options. Uh, one D on the line for a push. Uh, on a success, gets the assist. Or he just gets that down lineman out of the way, allowing the guard to get the assist and cancel the assist, allowing the two on the ball. Uh, Agi 5 man then recovers post success to throw to the Agi other Agi 5 man. 1Ds, I don't know if, why they, were, if they were the one. I think he, he could have afforded for the mighty blow. Uh, he wants to use tackle. Fair enough, then maybe the movement man could have came around for the assist. Only needs the one assist, presumably will be guard. Hear me now? Yes, hear now. That should stop the echo. Yo. Yep, gone. Brilliant. Oh, didn't get him. All because he made the one day with the troll. So this this movement nine yeah. catcher with dodge. I think that could have been the assist. It's otherwise not really do anything. You've got two yeah, five to Yeah, I think he could have done that better. Uh... Shame that the tackle wrestle guy was the one that it was scoring range. Yeah. If the other AG5 was in scoring range, wrestle. Got it there. I mean, 2 0 could have just been the end of the game, couldn't it? Absolutely. So, Thud with the double ones did get let off. Oh, I sort of agreed, double one, too. Like the, and that's the sort of double one that I've got little sympathy for. Well, no, for. because the, the other one, it would have been his ball carry on the mad trouble yeah but i mean compared to uh ringtails you know final action dodge somewhere well even even his, one of his dodges were pretty early but i mean it was just something that could have been prevented those, those gfis wouldn't have had to have been made had he just made a little bit more of an effort over the last four turns and so yes unlucky to roll a one in 36 but you're eventually going to roll a one in 36 at some point 
I think it was his second yeah. D6 barring the catch. He had five turns. He should have been a lot further up by then. Yeah, absolutely. And so I think he's really gotten away with this. Uh, but still now down one for the drive, which means uh, looking like overtime. If he scores in his own drive next half. And the elves don't turn up. That's true. G5 catches, not too bad at one turners. Although eight turns, so I uh, get locks on them. Have we seen any big one turners this season? The, what, aside from holders, ones? well, aside from holders yesterday, this morning. Um, from, yeah. No, not really. None that I can immediately recall. Is there one from the Skaven? Oh no, that was decided to dive and tackle Skaven. Presumably not. Mighty Blow would have been a Kaz there. Yeah, well, look, Large though definitely disappointed with the lack of scoring this drive. Uh, did pick up three KOs for his trouble. If, you know, only one wakes up, he's up two for the second drive, which gives him a uh, two-man surplus to properly grind out these ults. Still has two drives, still has the dirty player. Uh, yeah, I think he can do a lot of damage in his... Yeah, lots, lots of damage in his drive, and then shut down the one turn if... Uh, I'm going to see a foul on the other thrower as well, I think. Yeah, hey, definitely. Plus one with a dirty player. Not the worst foul in the world. Okay, so with no babes on average, Ringtail can expect two of his KOs back, meaning two players down for the second half. On a good day, he gets three or four. On a bad day, he gets one. Yeah. And the problem is the let. Oh, he's powered that guy. Jamie didn't save his uh, his foul for that, but he couldn't guarantee. I might have made that block first before the foul. Well, obviously he was worried about the one in nine, then denying him the foul, so he took the safe option. Gets only one of his Kaz back, so below average Ooh. KO rolls there. And the biggest issue with that for me is it just means that you're taking more blocks through the next drive, and you have less players to apply any pressure with. Yeah, the pressure will be trivial, even if you go all mans with all your mans. To and it doesn't large matter. It'll feel like a half man. It doesn't matter how much damage large stud does in this drive no matter how much he does he's not he's not going to score before turn six forced to because he'd rather have the fifth cost to get the receipt back to the opponent that so he will always be playing for overtime unless of course he has his every Well, you're quite right. If he, if you tell you what, if he dates the cans on these three blocks, and then one on the blitz, and then one on the blitz for the next four turns, and there are zero L's on the field, like turn twelve, I think you would then against two L, I guess three L's potentially waking up from a KO. I think you would look for the turnover to score in regulation time. But that's a tall order, and yeah, I guess it really depends. Yeah, it, it really does depend on how how successful you are with those guys. I kick into a catch, saves him the risk of picking up. I mean, the yeah. elf game plan here might be full evasion. Yeah, just concede the... well, not concede them. Concede the drive and hope that the... Uh, not the K's work back for next time. hits, though. I don't understand. What's the rationale for doing this with Black Hawks? I can't think of any. 
Unless he just sets up like this because he's so worried about the blitz. You know, he wants those blitzers able to go back deep if it all goes wrong. Nah, look, it's hard to criticise risk mitigation if that's what it is. I mean, the, the blitz is really the... his chief concern from losing for man. Also, have you changed the push oh. report recently or, or are sitting back in your chair? Sorry? Are you sitting back in your chair or have you changed the push report or, or something to do with the... Uh, no, I change, I've changed my sensitivity if you don't feed back. If it's easier, I'll just go back to my head. Yeah, just just cutting out the end of some sentences. That's all. Yeah, that's what I was happening with your uh, your. Yeah, but haven't I leaned closer now, and so that shouldn't happen? Yeah, yeah, you're you're, you're all right, but it's. Wow. One of your mods got a little bee in his bonnet today. What a cry, baby! Yes. Wow, I can't believe it. Maybe, uh, maybe someone's hacked his account. Scar is usually a polite fella. Fair enough. A safe cage, a mighty blue blitz made. Uh, not much ring tell here. A nice gang foul here. True. Fair enough, a stun for Nord at no cost. Well, his, his fouls have not been as effective fouling yesterday. He did get a KO with one foul, didn't he? But that's, I think, the best he's managed, so. What do you do with Ringtail from this position? You don't really have options. Full back. Yeah. Fall back and, and just, just wait till turn 16 and hope you receive an overtime and hope you don't lose any men. Thing is, against two I bribes, mean, staying on the ground probably isn't an option either. No, so you just you just run everyone back because look look at the six players he's got available to screen. If he tries to screen, something valuable is getting He's got no apo. I think just pull out. Pull out right now and... Let you go. Score then. You stopped his score, so you're not like obviously if it was one all, you'd have to try. Yeah, definitely. But you you know what large studs game scoring early, and by putting you know by putting guys in the way with only eight players on field anyway, you're just delaying the inevitable, aren't you? Yeah, that's true. But I mean, the mighty blow pylon will chase him down, and so you know why you might get away this turn. Next turn you're in blitzable, uh, blitz, blitz range, and then someone's taking a claw bomb hit. Oh, well, we just go for a rowdy randy, oh, just straight in. Gosh. You go in. If he had a leap on his Agi 5 here, leap on the uh, tackle wrestle Agi. I thought we were going to see big, something really big cheeky. Big KO there, the... pretty nice. So, 10 against 8. He does that every turn. Well. Yeah, fair enough. Bit of a surprise, really. Another option in my mind is like blodgers on every. Uh, you know, just tie up some orcs. Yeah, miscellaneous bodies in places. Eventually they're going to hit the powers yeah. of four. And just leave the edge man open. Red die on the troll with the re-roll. I don't know. I don't mind the red die, I don't like the re-roll yeah, with no, overtime. I'm absolutely not. And you know that the game's going to overtime unless you join a mobile. If you're not, if you're not willing to take the mighty blow hit from the troll, just don't throw the block. Absolutely. 
And it's a bludger too. You're just better off two plus it out. Or just, just letting the, orc, the troll throw the block might. Yeah. One in nine for a 33% success. As in a one in nine risk for the 33% success. Go troll went stupid anyway. That would have been nice. I mean, I know he's got four rerolls, but that's not an excuse for burning them. Definitely not. It's different. It's different in the first half, as we discussed. Tell you what, in yeah, uh, seven or uh, fourteen turns from now, when he's at no rerolls and he fails something important that's game winning, we can say, "Remember that red dice on the troll," and we can tuss and and check our heads. That was definitely not something that should have ever been rerolled. Baby, value play. He's getting piled on. Should the pile on not get? Yeah, just stun. He can foul something else now, knowing that he's gonna be able to foul that guy. Yeah, true. Ball probably doesn't move this turn. No, it looked like I think the double guard that. on the other guard man a bit, uh, a little it's bit. He's got to be careful with the sidestepper though. Yeah. He could accidentally sidestep guard into the. Yeah, no, I think the. In fact, I just think he doesn't take the block. But then if the he doesn't take comes the block, across, and then the dirty player fills the black hole. And if you didn't, then I guess you could foul the kick line them, and then just use both bribes and hope you don't snake it. And that would let you block the sidestepper for a push and not get marked by the ball. Or not have him on the ball. If he sidesteps next to the troll here... The troll's actually got no tackle zone. He's forced to... No, he's already blitzed, hasn't he? Absolutely has a two die to clear. So bearing in mind the troll's a... got no tackle zone, the guard can get into the cage here. The ball carrier's gonna move. It has to move. Go now. We've only got four guys left to make a cage. The troll doesn't do anything. I guess the only play here is fall back and use the line the block lineman as one cage corner. Yeah. Don't use your dirty player this turn. Got to have the discipline not to dirty player here because there's too it's much hard. pressure from those two guard players. And we said this yesterday, you know, how much elves change. He also has to remember that his troll is stupid. So as big as he looks, he's doing... Yeah, might have forgotten about it. That could really cost him. No, you can't go... You can't go there, Fash. Hmm... Oh, great foul. Double six is on the injuries, though, so the ref will spot this. First of the bribes is going to be attempted. And that is now a permanent one-man advantage. But I honestly think the cage is a little bit open here. Yeah, look, one guard frees the other and on a push. Uh, I guess the Blackhawk's still arguably in the way. Dodges well, look, Ringtail has a plan. Ringtail has a plan that he's really happy with. He's straight in. Sorry? Ringtail seems to have a plan that he's really happy with. He's uh, moved yeah, immediately. Yeah, Ran is actually five straight in there. I thought that would be the guy going in, though. This stun in front of the troll's not making it great. And that there would still be the dodge with the number twelve lineman at the back. The black hawk if we're not clearing the black hawk. But if he left, pushes it, no, if he pushes this blitzer directly behind the troll, he can get two dice on it for a push. To not only push the uh, ball out, not only to push the guy back, but then he could like follow up his guy in. Yeah, that was the one. 
Oh, he needed this for a push here. Yeah? Um, Thud needs to take the both down. No, he's just given two dice on his ball. <laughs> That's a great play. He needed, he needed to select the both down there. He's just given a two dice tackle on his ball. Lucky for him, there's no one to collect it though. Sure. No punish. Everyone has moved. Reroll. Oh my word. That was the uh, the wrestle tackle. That was a great red dice. Holy shit. I think the best uh, the best result for a red dice should always be a push <laughs> or a skull. And now that was a great push with the one. Well, I don't, mate, that was, I that, was, that was play of the tournament what, so far. Oh, sorry. The the Agi five was creating the push, wasn't he? Yeah. God, if you had one more player there. Even just ball on the ground and scattering anywhere near an elf, I think would have been a great result. What I mean is it's a shame he had to use such a great player such a menial task. Yeah, true, true. Well, I mean, that's the, the benefit of being up men's for large thud. Also, thud, you know, thud could have just taken the both down. True. Said, All right. Saw what was happening. An armor sure. roll on an armor nine. Fine, but you're not the ball. It's, it's one of those things, it's just an instinct for some people, isn't it? Yeah, I've been red nice, let's take the push. But man, that was, that was probably uh what do you reckon? But that's a toss-up between that, that push play and uh, World Sitars for the block on Ducky in round one? I think it was round one. Those were, the, those were two just grace uh, push plays to get blocks on the ball carrier. Oh, completely. I've just swapped back to my headset mic, by the way. Okay. You're definitely a little more clear on that other mic, but if we're getting echoes and cutting out... It's probably yeah, yeah, it. it's, it's better to use this one. Yeah, so look, uh, Large Thud definitely has accrued some removals. Uh, are you really that surprised, though? Tell you what, had he been making three LOS blocks with Mighty Blow, tell you what, I wouldn't be surprised with his current result, knowing that he's got a dirty player and two bribes. I would say this many off the field. Probably slightly better than average. So I wouldn't say it was some sort of radical Kaz fest like... Uh... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the two Mighty Blow hits on Arm 7. He didn't need to use his piling on, but it was still decent hits. Yeah. Wow. Opt in for the, the not to foul the Strem 4 AG5 for the sake of getting those two assists. And so it's effectively only a one assist difference because the Strem 4 AG5 has one less armor. So I think I would, I mean, it does keep him a bit safer, doesn't it? Still got guard all over his uh, left-hand side, though. Do you think uh, Large Thud's just happy chilling, getting this, these free uh, base contact blocks? Yeah, but the problem is, is if if this is happening every turn, the orcs might run out of time again. You know, if they hit if they hit a bad a bad spot in terms of removals, or even just a few clutch stuns. He's gonna he's gonna keep driving them back here. Pushing them back one orc at a time. Yeah, push them back like this, disengage. You know the Fair enough, a nice screen, single man in base contact, uh, sidestep on no tackle, no block. 
the orcs are properly condensed here, aren't they? That's the thing. So the, the lack of elves isn't a massive factor because the orcs are so tightly packed. Look, turn 12, still plenty of time. And the wizard in hand. Yeah, but I think he's trying to save that for overtime. Yeah, but he'll obviously use it if it means getting the ball over the line. He's going to get a natural, no, non-natural armor break here. A three on the piling on injury, so only a stun. Am I definitely holding up better in the second half? Yeah, after an absolutely storming start, King Veal's quietened down a bit, hasn't he? Yeah, he's probably just tired. A bit of fatigue. I mean, Orcs traditionally known for their stamina. I like Troll on uh, full strength man, full strength man without dodge. Extra, extra one and six potentially. Mm, wouldn't mind some ground at least. Well, this is the thing he got himself into the in into in the first half, isn't it? He sort of spent yeah, so long blocking and fighting, and it, like every pile on puts his blitzer on the floor, which means he has to get up, do somebody else. You know, they're not going to get there one square at a time. He needs his dirty player to get a removal here, just to just to keep ahead in numbers. Doesn't even break oh, armor. Already miles ahead in numbers. Just needs to stop dawdling. Just needs to elect to move the ball forward as opposed to not move the ball forward. But if he gets if he gets a stun there, there'll be only five elves to screen, and then he can make a real push. Yeah, not a huge difference between five and six, though. Not if you stay compacted like this. Yeah, but he's because... choosing to. And that, that's that, that's my criticism. Yeah, yeah, but that, that, that's what I'm saying. And now, if this, if, this guy, if this guy gets knocked down, he's looking at one square of progress next turn. Hmm. He's a uh, Oh, baby. Up. Oh, baby. It's going to slow them down. Are you rolling five strength, man? On the failed dodge? No. You want to, but I don't think you can. If because the, wor the worst the case scenario, the worst case scenario on this drive is overtime, not loss. Another one D on the troll. Oh. Is that a side stepper on the top right? No, just watch guard. Ah, uh, shame he could have side stepped onto the ball. Sidestep's so good for cheeky things like that. Yeah. It does get the dodge out easier on the uh, three pass rather than the. Well, not dodge out. Waiting to see if he makes the first one before attempting the second one. Might not even attempt it. Might just say, alright, a black orc. One in nine chance that he wrestles himself to the floor. I think the dilemma is that the black orc then gets a two for the push and the pommer can pom the five strength. But then he got Pretty rowdy one dice like, though, from the strength four, wasn't it? Because if you skull that, you're taking a freaking mighty blow hit. On AV7, AG5 strength 4 for sure. Bit rowdy. I guess, making, oh, I guess the argument is then the 2 plus for the push. Or oh. the 2 plus for the dodge. If we don't see at least 4 squares of movement this turn, I'm going to start to rise. But then once you. If they hem into one side, the elves can make it more difficult with less numbers. Yeah, but just getting forward has the screen retreat those four squares, and you wouldn't fully commit. You you know you make you it got you got and, two and, fast. And You're gonna have to settle for two it. here. Wow, we're half right. Oh, also interesting to note, there's no Frenzy on the Orc team. Yeah, look at the skill ups though. It would have been hard to have taken Frenzy over something that he currently has. Like, I don't hate tackle on the ball carrier. 
Obviously not to take the three dice with the troll, or I'll take the two dice with the black orc into three dice with the troll. And then guard black orc, dirty players open. Wow, still two Ds. Must want to move the troll somewhere back to the strength four, presumably. For the guard man. No, sorry, yeah, the trying, to guard keep, man. trying to keep him relevant. Force the dodges on the strength four. Yeah. Especially when you know your opponent can't re-roll, just basing unfavorably the guys with no dodge is very helpful. Stupid oh troll. Cage a bit separated. Lodge man really doing work. Arguably getting two black orcs and a troll. Big, big injury there. Double fours into double six, and that's an MNG. So Ringtail will be looking pretty weakened if he does make it through the fine to the final. Definitely, but, uh, at the mo but at the moment, I'd say Thud is on top here. I think that's his only Mighty Blow Tackle, so uh, playing against Woohoo, a good, it would have been a good blitz on the Wolf, or the Ghoul. The thing is, that was always going to happen eventually, with a with a Tackle Pom Blitz every turn and a Dirty Player Foul every turn. Yep. Definitely. I think he was lucky but, to get through the lead last four turns, or the, for this entire drive without a K as well. I think both bribes turns, were successful as well, which has a 70% chance. Are you going into the cage here? Single man to market? The 1d3 success? Yeah, After the 100%. Dodge? He's, he's mispositioned his guard. Yeah. Yeah, I, th I think you have to. Not really getting a because, better spot, spot to turn him over. Yeah. You don't even because need to you're score. Not, you can just run away with him. Yeah. Again, worst case scenario is overtime. You're losing mans every turn. Would you've, you reroll you've, you've almost got... You've... Oh, a little bit dodgy even. There, got, there is tackle on the corner. Yeah. Oh, he's just going to screen. Actually, it's not <laughs> because he dodged through the black hole. No, is he just going to screen? Wow. I think I would have gone in. If we call the stumbles five pluses, five on the dodge, and the one D for the stumbles. Yeah, tackle man would have dropped him, Agi five man could have recovered. Yeah. Tell you what, after seeing Thud dawdle uh, on the first drive, and now dawdling again this drive, maybe Ringtail thinks he can, he can just stand in front of him and stop him. Yeah, but the pressure... The pressure is even better though, isn't it? If you if say you made that in and knocked the ball loose, right? He's got to spend a turn recovering and making it safe again. And probably using the if, wizard if you, if pick you it don't up. recover, right? So then he's down to two turns. So then you do your screen to slow him up, and then he has to potato because the rest of his team's slow. The two black orcs and the troll are now completely irrelevant as well. You might even have to risk a sideline here. Although it's oh, at boy. turn 14. If you sideline, do you want a 9 handoff to the stand firm? I would not risk a sideline cage against an NG5 strength 4. But that's what I mean. If you do that, you have to have the, uh, the stand firm holding it. Even think, I think, guard, if, I think if there guard. was a turn to go in, that was it. Yeah, absolutely. Wouldn't have had a better shot. Paid the price or took the risk in basing three men with the Blodge uh, guard. Got away with it in that the Blodge guard didn't die and tied up three men. Thud realising that clock's ticking, isn't piling on. And we'll hopefully see some progression that maybe could have happened a couple of turns ago. I think that'll for... be the one weakness of Thud's game so far is the slow is the slow progress. But now he's now he's in a reasonable spot, providing he doesn't get hemmed in. 
Yeah, if he manages to screen out the other guard man, this base contact on the strength four, not as scary. And the Black Orc can screen it off. Uh, between it and the troll. Series of one die here, though, could open it up. Six elves trying valiantly to hold off this orc advance. Once again, ringtail moving really quickly. I haven't seen anything good relating to the ball. It's just screening again. Stand firm guy gonna do some work there. Can't be pushed back. Well, the thing is, he knows that anyone not in a scoring threat next turn is not scoring. And the way he's got the orcs now, all of the Agi 3 guys, all four blitzers are contained in one area. That's true. Only one tackle uh, basing them. So you have to be really careful about who he blocks and would need the success, so literally no, there, there's not a lot of blodge there, just the thrower. The four strength isn't actually blodge. No. I think he'll dodge that out. Or make the 2D. Uh, yeah, there's no guard, so he could 2D the guard guy back. I wouldn't have hated that as well, because everyone, you know, if he's... If he's got the strength for based as well, that's two blitzers that aren't going anywhere. Yeah, whereas now it's really just giving the freebies to the leader, or on the leader and the uh, edgy three lineman. That still soaks up two blitzers though. True. And the Black Orcs are somewhat irrelevant. Two at the back, certainly. Yeah, they'd just be basing along with the troll, really. Blocking with the guard to get the follow up seems like a good idea. Yeah, it frees up his um, his killer as well to make a nice punch through maybe on the strength four. Gets a knockdown on the AG3 lineman. Moves his stand form forward knowing that he can sort of exert some pressure there. Giving I mean, the elves the option the to line. one in 36. Five elves here. Can't score this turn. Yeah, looks like it looks like he's going up there then. Does the killer follow this up knowing he'd have to dodge out? No. Wouldn't Does. follow and would maintain the strength. If, if, he, if he's if he's following, no, he doesn't pile on no. to his cutting this guy. So he's gonna sideline it, Fash. No, but how can he? No one's in front then. Maybe he didn't five think five elves the... can stop this. Yeah, the follow up the was throw. not correct. But then the sideline sucks anyway because Agi five. Yeah. Black Hawk scoring threat. And with the throw, making some use. use. Did he move yeah. the Black Hawk off the troll before moving the troll? He did. Maybe just playing Mine too fast. Really, a bit inattentive. Really. Misplay there. Obviously, yeah. you'd like to have, you'd like to have the troll squishing those guys in. Never mind. <laughs> Not punished. <laughs> Oh boy, Luz Thud. Maybe just feeling the pressure. Alright, no, uh, there wasn't actually someone touching the troll at the start of the turn. So, guard man oh, okay. had to, yeah, so that, that makes sense. Wasn't so, you'll be bringing someone back for the chance of doing yeah. that. 
And that's probably not worth it at turn 15. I think just the Blackhawks moving forward to tag is good enough. Five elves then to stop this score. It's not actually that hard for the others to get out. But where on it? Where's he putting the ball? Because the ball needs to go forward at least one square to be in scoring range. Otherwise, you're risking a handoff. I've no idea. Nothing's actually going to be safe. Especially with that thrower. If the um, thrower wants to throw a red. To be honest, he be could go behind. Well, no, he could. He could push the thrower away with the line, and he could go behind the That's three right. on the sideline, meaning the surf would be impossible. That seems the, like the right play to me. Yeah, so it was correct not to move someone to the troll for the chance of moving the troll. You're better off you moving the guaranteed black orc. I think one square forward's fine here. Just to avoid that that turn 16 oh, GFI. I think one square forward would be the worst. Because if he's one square forward, the thrower... Yeah, the thrower is not blockable. The thrower then pushes the lineman behind the ball carrier that's one square forward. No, no, the chain the, comes the, to surf the carrier. The lineman could have blocked the thrower. He hadn't acted, had he? I'm pretty sure he had just stood up. There was a white oh, circle okay. on when we were discussing it. Ah, uh, right, okay. It looked like he hadn't acted yet, my yeah. bad. Um, well, I think the elves can can double line screen this because there's no diagonal option, really, is there? Right, blitz back the strength four with your own strength four. Set up a nice line. And you can at least force the wizard. Wow, I wonder why he blocked, uh, why did he block that way? What, what if he pushed the lineman behind the ball carrier, then did that play and surf the ball carrier? It would have to be the red from the thrower, which is a bit rowdy. But red for a push oh, that, from the thrower, we've shown he's been willing to do nah, that. No, that have pushed him? Oh, you mean if he dodged it, dodged in on the five, four plus? No, you're quite right. There, there wouldn't be. Uh, no, no, we yeah, sorry. Ah, uh, sand. Well, what what I would have side. liked to have seen, though, instead of that, was him actually push in front of the the ball carrier. Because if he got a stun, then he's blocking that square and, and you know for, you're forcing the path. Because then you know you don't have to cover the sideline. I think the wizard might have to come out here, Fash. I think so too. There's some clutch dodges. They'll definitely get the wizard, I'm pretty sure. Could it all come down to a an elf receive and score in overtime. So Ringtail, Ringtail in the final is going to be severely weakened with the two MNGs. Yeah, definitely. Look, it's all it's all on this turn. What looks like the easiest in the bag. Uh, one, two, three. Okay, so he's going to blitz. He's, with his killer, he's going to move this catcher. But both down wrestle would block his own path. He does get the power. So it's one, two, three, four, five. It's two GFIs though, Fash. Two GFIs with the ball to be eliminated from the tournament. Pretty rowdy, isn't it? Yeah, I'm trying to think if there was something better. Look, I, I, I guess so. I guess so. I think. I think I would have zapped. I think I would have zapped the strength four catcher and just gone straight. Oh, makes the GFIs. I guess it allowed him to do it on pushes. Two shots at KOs here, so there could be a few elves in play. There's the first bunch. So then there is the one turn opportunity. Definitely. Public air is waking up. Uh, still has a movement 9 on the field. Not the AG5 that I'm sure he would have loved to have on the field for this one turn. Yeah, look, the, the two GFIs, right? So the ball carrier was always going to make one GFI, wasn't it? If he went yeah, down the sideline with a block on one. one and a block for a push on the other, a 1 in 9 would have blocked the path. 
Whereas going for the extra GFI, it meant that the block could have been a push. So I guess that's fair enough. Right, two squares for movement nine, isn't this? I think so. Yeah. So he's got to set up against this. It's going to have to be quite a technical setup. Uh, he might also opt to, depending on how they set up, he might try and use the edgy five, but I imagine the strength four is going to have to do the blitz. But with the strength four on the guard, it makes it pretty good, doesn't it? Yeah, that's true. I mean, I'm sure the strength four will then blitz, but with a troll being strength five and enough guard to deny assists and stand firm being well, on one side. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, in my mind, you put the troll on one side and the stand firm on the other. Yeah. And then guard behind them diagonal to make the blocks tough. Single guard, so... On the troll. I guess red unless he double guards the blitz square to get the push, and then you push on a troll around. Oh, talk yeah, us through this one, Fash. I've got someone at the front door, one sec. Gotcha. No, no, I, I really like ringtail blocking for, uh, large side blocking for pushes. If there's one thing you should do on a turn you need to score, it's block for pushes. And yeah, coming at the risk of needing an extra 2 plus, I'd make that risk. I do like blocking for pushes. Hmm. Seems to be putting extra men in places. Uh, no size on the catches, so probably the whole setup. And I assume he'll just ignore the LOS now and just push a black hawk round. And there'll be no dodges after a single tackle zone catch if he gets the three pushes. Hmm, ultimately he might have another plan. The, the men here, the catcher here. Catcher man, 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 man. Blitz into the hole. Catches it here, walks in. This seems like it might be a little bit of extra work to catch the ball. Yeah, just here. This is traditionally why you only see three men on the line uh, on a... on a one-turn defense. It's to stop your opponent from just setting up here and ignoring everyone here. And surely it's from the side that doesn't have the guard directly behind, so you can all the guard completely. I don't think I'm tripping. Yeah, second line wall two. Or the V formation to make the catches harder. Although against catches, probably not as good. Well, we'll see. Oh, yeah. Extra vibe going into overtime. Uh, short kick. Doesn't actually have a two dice either. Uh, I guess it depends on where the real goes, Uh On. Well, I don't know, eh?
I'm sure he would have loved to have this being the guard and the guard being here. Does we roll it? Gone. We're all gone and no one turn. Yeah, I think, I think the guard here has him being relevant for the final push. And. Yeah. Don't know about that. But he's got a bribe, so he could think about using it on this black orc. And then just hope to receive, I guess. Yeah, I think this side is the way to go. No, no one D doesn't need an extra man. And yeah, on no the first turn, I think wow. you just take it. Yeah, didn't get the push. He said he actually gave him the setup though. Yeah, it was crazy. And then Ringtail took the different wow. side. Ringtail took the side where he had to bring in an extra assist for the blitz. Whereas on the left hand yeah. side, the, there was no guard behind the black orc, so he could have made the two. No, his setup would have been harder because it was in the sideline, remember? The other Black Hawk was infield, so you could get the, the players in better positions. Yeah, but you, uh, the two on the sideline, and then the two here, two here, one here, uh, you can't see it. But your catcher then is in front of the guard Black Hawk, one man behind him, and then the blitz from the inside blitzes the Black Hawk into the hole, and then the two men that are on the LOS make the chain into the chain, into the chain. Yeah, fair, actually, fair enough. Yeah, you're right. So I think you really got to be careful when you're doing more than three on the LOS in that you're not just letting him set up. It reminds me of, uh, remember Bucky and Malik in the World Cup. Uh, Malik got a quick snap. Bucky went for the mm. the half field screen. And yeah, the, the quick snap just allowed the Skaven to ignore the, the half field screen and just blitz the corner of the screen. And so I really do think that in the one turn defense, just having three men is the way to go. And yeah, guard definitely making it harder. But pretty much this exact setup, but on the opposite side, with these three being here instead, or on the, on the opposite side, wouldn't have required the extra man. But tell you what, if you can't roll a single push, it doesn't <laughs> doesn't really matter. No, I mean it wouldn't have even been a hard one turner, would it? No, not at all. Two pushes, couple of GFIs, you win, you're through. Fouling. Fouling the guard they black. Got a orc. Grab on the kickoff. Oh, wow. That's a great foul. And it's gonna hurt. After for next game. So whoever's playing against Woohoo Boy next uh, next week. Is how yeah, they've been helped out. Yeah, absolutely. Fash! I've got a family thing that I've got to take care of quite urgently, so you might have to solo for the uh, majority of overtime. Kiss all the women for me and tell them I said hi. Uh, yeah, don't, don't. Uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll probably talk to you about it off stream. But anyway, That's I'll it. see you in a bit. Alrighty. Alright, overtime. Uh, Orcs getting to receive. So Orcs winning the toss. I bet he's ecstatic about that. I think he could have been in such a better spot than to have the game result in the 50-50 in who receives the ball. I think a large thud could have closed this out at many opportunities. And has been really lucky to now receive. Because if he didn't receive, I think these hulls is going quite easily. Hey look, uh, Woohoo representing the, uh, the Australasia region. I recently found out that New Zealand is somewhat close to Australia, geographically. It's a small island nation, no one knows much about it, they don't do anything of worth. No one goes there for any reason, has no tourist attractions. Um, but it does exist. Isn't fictional, like Narnia or Scotland. Um, but yeah, woohoo from New Zealand, and Ringtail from Russia. And Large Thud, currently residing in Poland, as I understand it. So, uh, everything but that North American continent being represented. And I think uh, Holber's French? Oh boy, I've insulted him now if he's not. But I think he's French. 
Yeah, high kick on all three uh, kickoff events for Large Thud's offense. A hobble from Poland. Wow. Now, I tell you what, I'm sure Large Thud would prefer to be ticked in the North American continent then. So I tell you what, global global semi-finals. Sean's pick up success. Uh, a little bit scared of the edgy five. Could have caused a ruckus. But Wizard gone. Both coaches with a bribe. Uh... Didn't look at the removals. Uh, two down for uh, Ringtail, one down for Large Thud. Which I think he had a bench. No, uh, Large Thud at the full complement of 11. Ringtail mm -hmm. down to. Uh, stupid on the guard troll. Uh, sorry, stupid on the troll means... Oh, there could be a sack on the ball. Oh boy. With the guard, if it's not fixed, he absolutely has to fix it. It has to have to be a 1D on the uh, guard Blackhawk. But with the... Black Orc to the left of the troll, if we're looking, I don't know what objective Lupac's looking from, presumably the High Elf. If we're looking from the High Elf perspective, one man to the left of the uh, Elf Mark and the Troll, and the uh, other man on the right of the... I get, it blocks it, doesn't it? I guess that's not really a thing. Never mind then. Never mind. Spooky times though with the stupid troll and a base contact front of the cage. I mean, it, it's still it's still a rowdy dodge on a block for a push, uh, with the black orc being being standing but only block for the power, and only going into two tackle zones. Into two tackle zones with edgy fives, only a three plus. Would have to be a team roll to roll it because he's into tackle, but uh, the edgy five wrestle tackle on a three plus for a one die block, not too shabby at the start of the drive. Wow, got the power. Could be in. So the edgy three lineman not only counseling the assist on the Pommer, also arguably denying the Pommer, and then just the three plus for the one beam. Good time as any. Uh, isn't actually through dodge either. Uh, isn't actually through tackle, so we'll have the innate dodger roll. Gets him this time. All one die blocks of skulls. They shouldn't be though when they're a sack on the ball carrier. Wow, would you use your last reroll on turn 17? Oh, there's no immediate recovery. You don't immediately win the game if this works. Oh, but there's so many, uh... So many catches that could be. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. One then potatoes, the other one throws it to it. Wow, that's so tough. I think blocks on the ball carrier should never be a skull. There should be some special fluff rule where it says, Ah, oh, a player making a blitz on a carrier playing the ball has the advantage of not carrying a ball when interacting with another player and therefore never rolls a skull. I think that would be amazing. Uh, Chol 3 die gets the lineman to get a freebie on the thrower. Ace guardman to assist. 
Scroll can get the push and then not follow, and then the Palmer can clear it if uh, it isn't the Pal. And if it is the Pal, he can then blitz the uh, Movement 9 catcher, and the Orc team can rotate up somewhat safely. Doesn't Palm looking to score early? I don't think there's any reason not to. There are not as few elves as there were last drive. Um, but if he's not dawdling and not stalling, as he did the last two drives, and makes some good progress every turn, should be able to run it in two turns from now. And so look, that, that really does rationalize the reroll from Ringtail on that last block. While I, while I hate it to reroll a 1D, it is a 1D for 3 success. But then you've just got no no reliable recovery. And then again, you have a bunch of high movement, uh, movement 9 elves and a 4 strength edgy 5. Picks it up on a 2 plus. Can then throw the ball from the tackle zone without risking the dodge out. So you're not risking your... Uh, Ball strength, 5 edge on the ground, to another catcher that runs downfield 3 squares further away, and you can do that on a uh, on a 3 plus. The catch then on a 1 and 36, the tackle then miles away. I guess the one rationale for not re-rolling it is, I think I will get a better shot at the ball. And I think being down so many men, he wasn't really getting better than the, the 3 plus 1 die from this point on. Uh, look, barring really, really, really dicey stuff from here on, Large Light will have to have it. Unless he does something truly, truly crazy. There's uh, not really any blob stepper that can harass the ball carrier to any sort of realistic success. Couple of blodge, just to be pushed away. Wizard was used in Large Thud's uh, second half offense. Uh, Lupak died, Apod. The, there was a recent uh, gunfight in his house. Uh, police were called. But I don't think we'll see much more of him in that. <laughs> uh, had, had a very family incident to deal with. Presumably a small child throwing a tantrum. Or a large child throwing a tantrum. Some sort of child is definitely throwing a tantrum. Alright, so what does he do now? Blitz away the front corner. Doesn't have a blotch step to mark the ball. Doesn't really want to put anyone in base contact with this tackle. It'll just be blocked away. I mean, could think about an old man's and just hope that you get lucky on pushes. John Flip. What a traitor. I'll let you handle this, Scar. I think that's at least a hundred points. Enough. Moved some men around, made some dodges, didn't really get around to doing anything that was too important. Yeah. Stun on one blodge man is going to be handy. It allows the palmer to get the palm on the four strength. Well. 
Not really. I just want to do a GFI. He wants to keep the ball safe. It's a lineman. Lineman up, ball carrier across. Blackhawk in for the assist, full strength POM. Other than other Blackhawk and other lineman, then screen the back. And with a stun, and then maybe a, a down result or a stun on the full strength uh, AV7 catcher. If it is a stun, that will leave three standing elves, two elves from the ground, and not a lot of options for. For Ringtail next turn. With three rerolls in hand, knowing that you're likely to score this drive, and with this, you know, going down, wouldn't hate the reroll. Fair enough not doing it. But you're just so in the bag if this uh, full strength catches on the ground. But it's fair enough to keep him open and. Fair enough to have the uh, tackle around the front in case there's any dodging shenanigans. All all week, sir. Alright, still in for a foul. Fair enough. Just gotta be a little bit careful about the uh, movement 9 catcher. That's a bit better. It's movement 9, edgy 5, still from the ground. Still capable of doing uh, sneak edgy 5 things. On a uh, couple of 2 plus dodges and a GFI. Could be the unmarked assist on the carrier. If there was a uh, all in play, but it's not really. Actually, there is on the three plus. So, tell you what, if the downed catcher goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, or six and single GFI because he's gone going from the ground, then uh, number nine line, wow. I guess he's a little bit trapped, isn't he? Maybe risk the three plus, two plus from the movement nine catcher, stand in front, then the four strength edgy five. Mighty Blow gets the 2 die on the ball on the 3 plus dodge. It is a 3 plus true tackle, but it would be a 2 dice on the ball. After a 2 plus, 2 plus, 2 plus, 2 plus, 2 plus, 2 plus, 3 plus, 2 plus. Wow, I think that was about. Oh, it's his blitz. He's going for the 1D blitz. Fair enough. 1D blitz with the wrestle tackle is, uh... Oh boy, all 1D blocks actually being skulls. You know, I don't think every 1D block should be a skull when it's on the ball carrier. That's the ball carrier is the one situation that I don't think it should be a skull. It shouldn't be a pal. It should never be a pal. 1D block should never pal. But for it to be a skull every time is a bit sad on a wrestle tackle fella. And that will surely be the game. Uh, full strength edgy 5. Well, edgy 4 now. Just a humble vampire. A humble, very fast vampire. But it's likely that he was never going to play again anyway, so the injury at this point, uh, not. Not the end of the world. If you're not referring to me, Strad K. I'm not passive aggressive. Just dawdle way too much on offense, I think, Ori Lances. Um, had five turns to score and ended up making GFIs when he didn't 
really need to. Could have just. Oh boy. Just runs it in. Fair enough. The 2 1 win. Making the GFIs one at a time to uh, play around a 1 in 6. And yeah, look, that's pretty much it. It's got to be Ringo as the favourite. Chocola. Well, there you go. Uh, large thud through to the grand final. Due to play Woohoo Boy. Uh, the unskilled Black Hole picking up a level. And the MV, well, the MVP allowing him to pick up the level. Uh, it wasn't unskilled actually, it was the 5 SCP Black Orc. So it's an extra Black Orc block, presumably. Which were really handy against the Necro team. Large Thug, congratulations. Uh, keeping your head above water. Bobbing up and down, doing a bit of, uh, bit of doggy style. Just treading. Treading water. And look, uh, I guess uh, Large Thug coming through with the removals. Uh, In spite of some of the the dawdling on offense. Yeah. Well, here you go. Final locked in. Necro Orc. It will be at some point in the next seven days. No elves in the final. Let's see, season one was Brett's and... Brett's and someone. I can't remember who Ducky played. It was Brett's and someone, for sure. Then it was Dark Elves and someone. See, no one remembers second place. Who did the Brett's play? Well, now look at both teams are a little bit banged, aren't they? Let's have another quick check on Large Thud's team. Yeah, absolutely, Large Thud. The push, uh, Red Die. It was a great play from Ringtail, to be honest. Spectacular. It's, it's right up there with World Sitar's chain push uh, against Ducky. Actually, it was a block for a red. We can't compare safe two die blocks to push a guy adjacent the ball carrier to a red die to push a ball carrier adjacent a guy. So no, look, we will still have to give it to to Alt Best push play, twenty seventeen. Uh, there was some miss next game there. Oh, there, the the line will be back. I think Thud did take a perma on someone, wasn't it? A was it the Blodge Man? I can't remember what Large Thud's perma was. It a black or no? It wasn't a black or maybe there wasn't a perma at all. Maybe I'm imagining things. Uh, this guy got a level, so it hasn't been uh, confirmed yet. No perm. This next game on your Black Orc. Well, I guess that's, that's a permanent, as he will never be seen in playing Blood Bowl again, that Black Orc. Uh, so three Black Orc. Which one was it? Presumably a guard one? If it was a guard one, it would be pretty shitty. If it was the block one, it's not as bad. Or was it the unskilled one that got MVP'd? I can't remember what I said in response for you, for you to say yeah in response to. And then you look, Necro's still single wolf, niggled ghoul, and then nothing else of note. And Lush Thud's TV will be dropped enough uh, that Woohoo's 1550 against Lush Thud's 1770, presumably. With the 220. Look, he still could get Cheney. He's had Cheney every game so far. 60k in the bank. Probably won't want to fire zombies against the Mighty Blow from the Orcs.
Yeah, just the double guard, the Mighty Blow not being too scary, and the minute that the Movement 9 Wolf's uh, Blitzable, I'm sure large double Pommet. Movement 7 from the 4 Strength Pom Wolf. But then again, you got the Dirty Player Wrist when your Pom is on the ground, so large double might not even pile on. And I think Woohoo's been really, really, really rowdy with his Werewolf in the past. Um, often risking a 2 die and or 1D. And that will just get pommed for sure. So 1720. Hmm. So look, probably won't get chained. He probably will just be a wizard and a babe. So just a single wolf to deal with. And if a single wolf is dealt with and a pom ever hits the ghoul. Yeah, look, maybe I think I might favor Thud here. Tell you what, if Thud can promise us that when he's got five turns to score, he <laughs> moves the ball down the field. I think if, if he fixes that element of his game, I think he's got this Necro's number. But I've said that every time I've seen this Necro team. I've looked at this Necro team every time and I've said, well, this isn't too impressive. It's a middling wolf, some middling fleshies, a, a mighty blow guard white, a normal roll ghoul, and the rest just zombies or unskilled people, or unskilled people with block. And so I've never, ever, ever favored Woohoo Boy in a single game just because the team looks so average. And he's uh, upset the picks every time. Yeah, absolutely. And who knows, the Necro Wolf could do work through the AV9. But nevertheless, it'll be a game of uh, tight positional gameplay, safe two die blocks, and. I guess uh, Woohoo and Thud can watch each, of their, each other's opponents' uh, previous matches on a fantastic YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Fatchbinder. Yeah, that's right, promotion. And yeah, every champ ladder match uh, that has happened, that I've seen, is up there at the moment. Yeah, who knows, if the, if the claw gets the cows on every block, sad times in Thud Town. Match is confirmed, alright, so yeah, miss next game with the Black Orc. Uh, presumably block for this Black Orc. Maybe guard? Definitely don't want to lose the Bash War. Definitely don't want your Black Orcs tied up in zombies. But then again, you don't want your Black Orcs tied up in zombies, you don't be making one in nine blocks. Block or guard would be a sound choice. <laughs> for sure, bud, for sure. Hey, what do you reckon about making Mighty Blow Blocks on the LOS? Like, against those speedy elves, having the Blitz in the backfield does make sense, and so I, I didn't hate it. But at the same time, to not make three Mighty Blow Blocks on the LOS, wouldn't you make three Mighty Blow Blocks on the LOS? Maybe, maybe that was just purely for when it's a Blitz, or he fails to pick up, or something really bad happens. But against a, against a Necro with only a uh, single wolf, presumably. And uh, good news for Thud is Dirty Player comes back. Or his other Dirty Player. Won't have the money for a bribe. Won't be down in TV to be able to induce anything. Yeah, I didn't hate keeping the blitzes free for elf bullshit. <laughs> you drunken. Oh, and uh, hold on, my bad, mate. I thought you were French. That's the rudest thing you can say to someone. Oh, gotcha. Uh, see you later. We pack out. Oh, uh, Flourisher asks, predictions for the result of the finals. Wow, I think I think we're sort of going through that, aren't we? 
Oh man. Oh, look, I think just picking the opposite of what the Lupak says will be the safe bet. Well, on the last two matches, I, uh, I quote unquote won through doing that. I don't know if you uh, you heard Dud, but Lupak picked uh, Ringtail to win, so I picked you. Easy game. Should have bet more flash points on it. Alrighty here then. Let's go check out this heretic. I'm uh Coast, you've got, put you've my coffee away and go to bed. Oh man, I can't do ten games that I would kill you. Alright, just just one game. Oh, I have to. <laughs> but you wanna play. <laughs> we'll probably only see three or four games. Maybe we'll see the Bulldog come on the bed. Maybe not. Ooh, I'm not sure. How are the Widows doing? Is there a good uh, shot? I haven't played them yet, but they're fucking beaten up though, right? Hold up. Uh, let me just read it. It's like I'm down to three catchers. Two of them have blood staff. One is a rookie, but the rookie rolled uh, double six as a level up. And I, I can't get myself to toss up straight on him. Mm. At the same time, I can't get myself to take it. My thrower is dead, so I bought a new one. Oh man. The rookie leader. And I'm down to two rerolls, and, and I have no subs, and it's just a mess. We uh, could watch time, I just need a draw Combat the Bunny playing League. Oh, it will take the, uh, or the non English speaking <laughs> Joe. Oh, what? You would need a draw and a win to overtake him? Yeah, yeah. Your I'm like. Maybe we'll just go to bed. I'm Let you guys decide. Uh, like thanks for watching. Uh, VOD will be up on YouTube. I'm like I'm like oh, behind if you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and stay fantastic. Alright. Best of luck. I'll probably need it. The thing is, though,